<clears throat> well, excuse me there. Hello and good afternoon to you. Oh, I'm about out of power. Hang on, let me plug this fellow in. Okay, that was the wrong one, I think. There we are. Okay, well, welcome to class. We are now in our second unit on political political participation. Oh, I'm tired. Political participation. Politics ain't politics unless we're all taking part in it. Um, and probably the most important element of political participation for us, for any of us, is elections and taking part in them. It's the only place where most of us are ever going to get a say in how government works. Uh, perhaps, perhaps one of you will run for office someday. Maybe not. Probably not, and for most of us, I have run for office before. It's it's tough work, but it's rather rewarding. Now, it is also very rewarding for you to go vote, for you to understand who is making decisions that affect every aspect of your life. And what happens in politics happens eventually to you in many respects. On the state level, of course, which we'll be looking at, and in the federal level. And really, anytime we're going to talk about political participation, we have to look at both because, as we've looked at before, we're in a federal system. We're in under two governments a state government right now, the state of Texas, and the national government, the United States of America. And you are responsible to the laws of the state of Texas as well as to the laws of the United States of America. You are responsible to the Texas Constitution as you are to the dictates of the United States Constitution, the dictates and the protections provided by both. So, let's first of all talk about elections. I have uh, a great deal of notes on this, and I'm going to be working with you through some of them. And I uh, think it's important to hear them as well as to read them. Uh, by the way, be sure you read your textbook. This is something that's come up with two or three students who've written me, and I'm, I'm grateful for them for writing to me because that's something that needed to be addressed. Uh, do, do, how do we manipulate this uh, online textbook? Now, your link is uh, available online. Uh, I'd had gotten to put some information on the syllabus, and uh, I'm pretty sure I've got everybody linked up now and all the information on the syllabus, so be sure and click if you've not gotten your textbook. Uh, you do need to, you do need to um, read. I mean, this is what the class is about. Um, certainly is for my students who are in the uh, online anytime without any online meetings. At least here, we're, you're able to hear me talk through some of this and also to answer direct questions. Although most of you are pretty darn shy. And I gather also many of you have not read a great deal simply because I not gotten any questions about. I didn't understand this, Mr. Sutter. I didn't understand this, Professor Sutter. I didn't understand this, Dr. Sutter. Uh, well, 
you certainly won't understand it unless you read it. And a lot of the stuff that's in that textbook is going to show up on an exam. And if you're not look, looked at it, yeah, it's a problem. I personally am thinking about going back to the printed textbook uh, next semester or so, simply because, well, I think a lot of people have a little difficulty manipulating a, an online textbook. Uh, I myself don't like an online textbook. Now, I, I, as you can tell, I like books. And one of the things I like to do with my books is to get a pen or a pencil or these are some people call them Bible markers, but they're highlighters, uh, 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 penciled, colored penciled highlighters or any highlighter. I like to highlight uh, my textbook which isn't a good idea to highlight your computer <laughs> and ruin your screen. These things cost a lot of money. So uh, a book works better. And I also prefer to write in the margins when I'm reading, making notes on what I've read. Uh, it's called marginalia. To remind you this is important and why and what the reaction is and how it relates to something else and maybe tie it together. This is a heavily, heavily important reading class. You got to read this stuff because my notes are, well, based on what's in textbooks. Because that's where the information is. I can only give you so much in a lecture. There's a lot more. And that's why you've got to spend a lot of time reading this stuff. This is college. It's not high school. Although you probably, hopefully, did a lot of reading in high school. I hope. But you, you darn well are going to read a lot in college. Now... I assume that most of you want to go on to a four-year institution after getting a couple of years out of the way here at HCC. And I can promise you, you will be spending, and you better be spending time now, but you darn sure better be spending a lot of time with a textbook and a highlighter and a notepad and taking notes when you're in your junior and senior year transferring over transferring over to Texas State or to uh, A&M or the University of Houston, HBU, any place like that. If you're going to Baylor, if you're going to Baylor, you're going to be spending a bundle of money. Same way with any private school. But Baylor's gotten incredibly expensive. No. I, uh, no. Couldn't have afforded it. And I couldn't afford it if I were going today, unless I got you know, financial aid out of the wazoo. So, uh, if, if, no matter where you go, it'll cost. But it'll be more costly if you don't get something out of it. And that means good grades, then a good education, and good employment either in a profession or in business or whatever your career goals are. But you've got to read these materials to understand it. So get to it. You don't like to read, but then you don't like to learn. I mean, it's that simple. And if you don't like to learn, you're going to be stuck. Because you go to work in a corporation or a business, you're going to be learning a lot of new things, and you're going to go mostly get it from you know, hitting the books, reading their material. You'll have to write memos. You know how to write well. If you read a lot, you know how to write well. And if you want to do well on the tests, you got to read all this stuff. By the way, the online textbooks call chapters modules. 
and then the subheadings are uh, something else. But uh, know that the textbook online does is broken into chapters, but they call them modules, and then they have learning lessons. The readings. And why they develop it that way, I don't know. It's very high school-ish or elementary-ish, if you ask me. But you're not asking me. In fact, I don't get many questions from you guys. I'd love to hear questions from you. I can answer questions. And usually, if people are asking questions, that's an, that's an indication that they've read something and they have put some work into it and you don't and there's a little bit of misunderstanding or lack of understanding and you want to clarify uh get into this you paid money for it you ought to get something out of it and i'll tell you this if you want to get ahead in life you better understand politics because Government, you may not be in, excuse me, let me rephrase that. Start over again. You may not be interested in government, but I damn sure can promise you government is interested in you from the time you're conceived all the way to when you are put into a hole six feet underground and they close, toss six feet of cold, dark, dark, dirt over your casket government's involved in your life now you can be a passive uh, victim or pawn of the government or oh you'll get some basic services certainly I mean you drive on the streets they're not free I mean, you'll be paying taxes in the city for it, for the building of streets. Uh, you drive on interstate highways, right? those are federal taxes. You're gonna be paying federal taxes. And I mean, for, listen, the first time you get a paycheck and it's not all there, you know, you know how much we're supposed to make this week and only about 80% of what you had expected is there. I said, hey, where is the other, say, you're supposed to earn a hundred dollars that week? New job. And you only got 75 or 80 dollars. Well, 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 you had a number of taxes that you were going to be taxed on. You had state taxes. I mean, I mean, I mean city taxes, or whatever, but federal taxes taken out i didn't want to pay any taxes well you, you got to now if you're going to be paying paying money to the government shouldn't you get something out of it not going to get something out of it unless you know what's going on and you take part in actively pursuing it so that's what political participation is all about and one of the key elements of political participation probably the core element of political participation is voting getting involved in elections, getting the right people in office to do the things that you think are necessary to make your community, your state, your county, your city, a better place for you to live in. I mean, hey, do you just, do you ignore government? You're ignoring where there are vital services that you need. Uh, and you got, you got to understand how you're paying for it. I mean, if you want to do away, some people say, well, we need to do away with government. We just ought to be like, run by corporations or businesses. Well, let's say your credit card's all used up this month and your house is on fire and you call the fire department. Uh, hi, this is Sears Fire Department. Can we help you? My house is on fire. I need a fire truck. We're very sorry. We'll have somebody out there right away. 
However, if you'll first give us your Sears card number so we can put the initial charge down, then we can also be able to charge you for the initial complete services. And we certainly want to get there as soon as possible so that we can save everything and also save you money, which is what we who do, do here at Sears. Well, I don't have any money on my Sears account. Uh, we're very sorry. Let me give you some charity work that will be able to help you find a place to stay after your house burns down, but uh, we don't provide charity services here at Sears. We are in the making money business. Government's not in the making money business other than printing money at the federal level. We don't print money on the state level. There's no Texas money. There is U.S. money, U.S. coin, U.S. bills. By the way, if you're hearing heavy breathing, it's not any fans of mine breathing heavily, but it is a dog who has been outside and is overweight and is hopefully going to calm down in just a few minutes. Uh, my wife let him in. He should have been outside. But, eh, eh, be that as it may. At least he's not barking. Uh, okay, let's talk about elections. First of all, we have to talk about Although this is a Texas class, we're going to talk about national elections because in our national elections, we elect people for Texas as well as sending them to Washington. We send them to Austin. We send them to downtown Houston, the city council, or to the city council chambers of Sugarland, uh, the county commissioner's court in Fort Bend County or Harris County or wherever you happen to be living right now. It's a big cup. It's much bigger when it's closer to the camera than I am. So it's not a nine gallon cup of Diet Coke. It has caffeine free Coke, so it's okay. Okay, general elections, what are those? We have major elections normally every two years. Every two years cycle, we elect members of the entire U.S. House of Representatives and the entire Texas House of Representatives, as well as the lower chambers of almost all the other state legislatures. We also elect a portion of the membership of the U.S. Senate and the Texas Senate, as well as the upper chambers of most of the state legislatures. This happens every two years. During this two-year cycle, every other two years, to be precise, we also elect a president. The major election held every two years in November is even, in even-numbered years is called the general election, the general elections. A mix of federal and state laws regulate elections in the United States and establish the national general election held every two years. Uh, by the way, the main reason for the two-year election cycle is the requirement in the Constitution that the entire U.S. House of Representatives be elected every two years. Members of the U.S. House serve a two-year term of office. The general election is held on Tuesday following the first Monday in November, every even-numbered year. The men and women elected to office in the November general election take office in January the following odd-numbered year. Uh, this is 2022. Uh, we'll have a general election later. And uh, then in January, so a lot of the officials for the U.S. representatives uh, will take office with a new Congress in Washington. Men and women from Texas, of course, as well as the other 49 states. The general election is held in Texas as well as the other 49 states on the Tuesday following the first Monday in November every even numbered year like 2022 we had or excuse me we're having a general election next month 
an important election for the state uh, and for our who we're sending to Congress. Uh, and by the way, who you send to Congress here and across the nation is going to be real important because there are women across America who are really upset about the Dobbs decision by the Supreme Court, which has effectively overturned Roe versus Wade and a woman's right, negated a woman's right in the United States of America to abortions, to controlling her own reproductive life. Uh, now, people who support abortion, or, uh, uh, oppose abortion, say, well, we're not concerned about that woman. We're concerned about that fetus. I mean, that baby. When does human life begin? Ooh. When the sperm meets the zygote? When the sperm meets the egg? Does it begin when a heartbeat is formed as the uh, womb develops that egg and sperm, which is now mixed and is creating, creating a human life? When is it a human life? Is it when there's a brain formed or when a heart's formed or when there's a heartbeat? Is it inevitable that it's going to become a human life? Well, if it is healthy, yeah, I guess. But who decides? The government or the woman? Anyway, these are important questions. Uh, you and I, guys, the, the fellows out there, it's not something that you and I are going to go, well, this, this is really affecting me. It is something that affects us because, uh, well, my wife is not going to have any children at this point in her life. And uh, I'm going to not be marrying again, even if this one decides to run away with some movie star. But I'll tell you what, you're going to get married and you're going to have a wife. And what if she's raped? Do you say, well, I don't I think you should not have an abortion. And she says, I think it's not any of your business. Because this is my body. That would be her response, I would imagine. Maybe. Maybe not. Again, this is this is a very important issue in the lives of Americans, of, of the men and women in this country and across the world, but here right now because of our laws and the Supreme Court, packed by Donald Trump for the very purpose of putting on the court men and women who will vote, would vote to end abortion in the United States in order for Donald Trump to get elected. In other words, he promised the conservative Christian fundamentalists that he would appoint members to the Supreme Court that would end abortion in the United States across the board. And he did. And they did. So, what are you going to do if you're a woman? As our tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of women across this nation are saying, what am I going to do? Well, vote. Vote. Because presidents and senates appoint people to and confirm people to the United States Supreme Court who make decisions about what's constitutional and not. And 
there was even talk about expanding the number of members of the Supreme Court. It's not constitutionally set at nine. It's set there by law. And there's talk about adding more members to the Supreme Court to balance out the court, the ultra-right wing members of the court with maybe ultra-left wing members of the court, which the Republicans would say, oh, well, all the members of the court that aren't Republicans are left-wing crazy people. That's where our politics has gone to today, almost that vitriol all the time, and that's very scary to me. I'm kind of a middle-of-the-road person. I take, can see both sides some of the time, although I'm not seeing both sides in this issue because I can't have a baby. I, I'm going to cry. I can't have a baby. I've always wanted one. No, yeah, I can't have a baby. I ain't built that way, right? Uh, so us guys can kind of take a back seat, although we have our beliefs, by golly. I was raised a Catholic. I was taught abortion was sin. Well, again, I am not involved in this fight in the sense that I am not directly affected. I also recognize that a woman should be able to be involved in making a decision. Okay, this is political participation at its highest level in terms of its importance for people. It's a huge issue. So anyway, who gets elected makes a difference. Donald Trump had not been elected, this would not have happened. Okay. All right. We, as I said, we have major elections, the general elections, major general elections every two years. Every two year cycle, we elect members of the entire U.S. House of Representatives and the entire Texas House of Representatives, as well as the lower chambers of almost all of the other state legislatures. We also elect a portion of the lower chambers. Uh, we also elect a portion of the membership of the U.S. Senate, excuse me, and the Texas Senate, as well as the upper chambers of most of the state's legislatures every two years, every two years. During this two-year election cycle, every other two years, to be precise, during this two-year cycle, we also elect every other two years, to be precise, again, we elect a president president has a four-year term of office, so every other two-year cycle, the president is on the ballot. Candidates for president is on the ballot. The major election held every two years in November, in even-numbered years, is called the general election. The general election. A mix of federal and state laws regulate election law in the United States and establish the national general election held every two years. The main reason for the two-year election cycle is a requirement, by the way, in the Constitution that the entire U.S. House of Representatives be elected every two years because members of the U.S. House of Representatives serve a two-year term of office. So we elect a brand new Congress or House of Representatives every two years. Oh, yeah, we might have seen a lot of the same guys and gals back, but it's still a new Congress. And those people who have been who were reelected have been a, another two year ticket to serve their people. Or they, people back home said, no, nope, you're not doing a good job. We're putting somebody else in. Uh, the general election is held on the Tuesday following the first Monday in November in every even numbered year. The men and women elected to office in November's general election take office in January of the following odd numbered year. So the men and women who are elected to Congress and the Texas legislature in November of this coming year will take office in January of 2013. Uh, 
let's look back a little bit in history. Uh, the people elected in the November 2016 election, general election, took office in January of 2017. Uh, in January of 2017, the new Congress, which was the 115th Congress, 115th session, also called the 115th Congress, and the newly elected 430 member, 435 members of the House of Representatives, they were all seated then. A third of the 100 members of the U.S. Senate were elected across the country in November of 2016 and took office in January 2017. Also in Texas, the Texas legislature made, uh, the Texas legislature began a new session the 85th session in January of 2017, after the 2016 general election. The entire Texas House of Representatives, all 150 members, all 150 members have a two-year term of office and were elected in the November 2016 election and took office in January of 17. In the November general election in Texas of 2014, the statewide officers of Texas were elected, like the governor, the lieutenant governor, the comptroller, the tre state treasurer, uh, the attorney general, all four-year term of offices. And they took office then in January of the next year. The November general election of 16 was a presidential election year, and because the president was not up for election during the subsequent two-year cycle, the November 18, 2018 general election is referred to as a midterm, midterm, meaning in the middle of the president's four-year term of office when he, uh, of office when he, uh, it's not on the general election ballot for that office. Uh, it's an off-year election, an off-year election. In November of 2016, we also went through the process of electing a president of the U.S. as part of the two-year general election cycle. We commonly refer to the general election year in which we elect a president as the presidential election year. Because the president has a four-year term of office, he's elected every other general election. 2004, 2008, 2012, 2016, and so on. Again, we commonly refer to the general election where we do not elect a president as an off-year election or midterm, mid-presidential term election, a midterm election since it is during the middle of the presidential term. We call it that because so we put so much emphasis and give so much attention to presidential elections that in a general election year, when we are not picking a president, voter participation is way down. I mean, way down. Uh, then, what it is during a then what it is during a presidential election in comparison i mean let's face it everybody in the country everybody in the state of texas knows who the president of the united states is ask a lot of people in texas who the who the governor of Texas is, and they might go, no, I'm not sure, you know, you know, I watch the news, and, uh, it's, you know, I don't know, I should know, golly, uh, but like I said, I don't, I, I, don't I, I, I watch the news on television, you know, and I, and I also, you know, follow the news in, on the internet, but Mostly I watch the TV news. So uh, I know who the president is and some of the people up there in Washington because they're always talking about the president uh, on, on TV news, particularly the national news. But even the, the, the no local news is going to talk about the president if something's going on up there in Washington. Uh, 
But you know what? They got tons of reporters up there covering Washington, tons of reporters. And there's, if the president's sick, boy, it's on the news. They'll break in. If the president falls, if the president breaks wind, if the president throws up, the president threw up today. News at 10. Yeah. Whatever the case may be. We know what the president's doing almost all the time because we cover the president like white on rice, ugly on a monkey. So why? Well, partially because reporters to this day think, oh man, if we'd have just been there and know, you know, been covered the president, I mean, in every step he takes and every mile he drives, we'd have had film of President Kennedy being shot. Might even have scared off an assassin, seeing that there was a camera on, coming on every corner taking pictures of the president. And this guy might have been found. Because there are a lot of people that don't believe that Lee Harvey Oswald did it. Still today. My wife is heavily into research on this, always has been. And I did a lot of research in my master's thesis about Lyndon Johnson and spent a lot of time in the library in Austin. And let me tell you, there's tons of material and still enormous interest in the assassination. Uh, but be that as it may, uh, the president's it. But then again, it's so much easier for a television lens, that one big eye, to get a, a picture of one person and one person only. Oh, but here's Congress. Oh, there's 435 guys in this room. Guys and gals, of course, ladies, I'm sorry. There's 435 guys and gals in the House chamber. They're all members of the U.S. House of Representatives. Well, who do we talk about? That that's too many people. We don't know which one to talk to. Well, let's talk to the president because he's the big cheese, the big enchilada. Let's talk to him. He's everybody's president. He's everybody's friend, sort of like Santa Claus. You remember Congress is the guy that was down the street at the uh, local uh, manager of the local J.C. Penney's and then he got... Uh, a better job, working at a bigger corporation, made more money and decided he was going to run for Congress. So he got himself elected to the United States Congress and the Senate eventually. And he's one of 50 guys and gals. Or he got elected to the House of Representatives. He's one of 435 people, but he's still important to the 11th Congressional District, which is where I grew up. Uh, but still, the local TV is going to be showing not only the nightly news from the national network, but if they're going to be talking about politics, they're going to cover Washington more so because it seems to be more interesting. You're talking about wars overseas. You're talking about famine. You're talking about things blowing up, and they got great pictures of atomic power plants, nuclear power plants being blown up by the Russians in Ukraine. Who? So, and we're going to watch, you're going to send a film crew to Austin to shoot uh, your local members of the Texas legislature from Central Texas? Uh, oh, man, I'll, I'll be asleep before I watch any of that stuff. I mean, or I'll be asleep watching that stuff. That's not interesting. War is interesting. Or, well, who's on the Supreme Court is interesting. Although Texas politics is interesting because you can talk about uh, crooks and, and con men all the time in Texas politics. You got good guys, you got bad guys, good gals and bad gals in office. It's the nature of things everywhere. But 
you're not going to see much and get much news about what's going on simply because local news is not going to spend the money to cover it intensely. But national networks are going to cover the president like I said, like several blankets on a cold, cold night. It's going to be a, always a lot of coverage. Okay. Uh, to win a general election, let's go back to the elections, a candidate needs only to receive a plurality, a plurality of the votes cast. In other words, the most votes that any candidate in the race receives. Doesn't have to be a majority. That's the plurality, the most votes. Doesn't have to be a majority, just the most. Uh, that's in a general election. In the November uh, 2010 general election, for instance, in the it was a gubernatorial race in Texas. Uh, you had, this is, as I said, some time ago, uh, the incumbent governor was Rick Perry. Some of you have heard his name before. He was an Aggie. Uh, nice looking guy and actually a very nice guy I've met on a couple of occasions and uh, and pretty conservative got uh, nominated to serve on I think President Reagan's cabinet uh, don't know if he was confirmed I just don't remember on hand I do remember that uh, one time during a debate or during an election he forgot uh, what some of the cabinet offices were in terms of when he was de de debating and discussing it. And it was a real embarrassment, which caused him to have a real problem getting elected. Uh, he may have been running for the Senate. I'm not sure, but whatever the case may be. But uh, Perry uh, was elected governor back then in uh, 2010 and he got only 55 percent of the statewide vote while bill white houstonian great guy uh received 42 percent in november of 2014 the republican gubernatorial candidate greg abbott defeated democratic candidate wendy davis 59 to 39 percent uh, wendy davis by the way uh, was on a special on MSNBC last night talking about abortion rights and the right to an abortion being eviscerated by the Supreme Court, Trump Supreme Court. Um, and of course, Abbott is a was very vocally uh, against uh, abortion and uh, going to even propose that people could sue women who have abortions in order to stop women from having abortions. He wanted that bill passed. I don't think it passed, thank God, which would have been really punitive beyond all measure, if you ask me. Of course, why ask me about abortions? I'm not going to have a baby, except I have beliefs, what's right and wrong. Uh, I used to tell students years ago when I weighed 400 pounds, 185, I think I am now, 180. Uh, but yeah, I looked like I was 39 months pregnant. But I ain't going to be pregnant. I ain't got the plumbing. Should I decide what a woman does with her body? I got to decide what I did with my body. I had surgery to get rid of my excess weight. If she has a child because she was raped or the victim of incest, she ain't going to lose that extra weight through surgery, i.e. an abortion, because we want to make it. We have, excuse me, we have made it illegal in this country. carrying a rapist's child to term. It's not the child's fault. It's not the baby's fault. But should a woman be required by law, by the government,
judgment, saying, you're going to have this baby, whether you want it or not. It's not your body. It's ours to tell you what to do. You don't have to agree with me. I'm just taking the position of what this argument is, and it is a monumental one. And I was raised in the Catholic Church, my dad. Mother was Baptist, but um, the Protestants were that I knew in small town Texas. They were a lot of them against abortion. My mother wasn't because she was a nurse, and she said, you know, "Women's got to be able to make a decision because for health, not only her physical health, but her mental health as well." So anyway, but it's important to vote because if you're against abortion, you want to vote somebody that's going to fight against it. If you are for a woman's right to choose, you better get out there and vote. You've got to get out there and vote. Because guess what? This can be reversed. It can be. But it's going to take some really, really difficult measures. It's going to take a lot of effort. But you want to play the game or are you going to sit on the sidelines and not even watch the game. Oh, I don't watch, I don't get involved in politics. Oh, it's just so boring. War is boring. I have said before, and I'll say it again, you'd be a lot more interested in it, politics if there was a draft. We did away with the draft, but guess what? It's a very bad world out there. Mr. Putin, who's a good friend of Mr. Trump, Mr. Putin wants to take over Europe. He wants to destroy NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, of which we're a member of. He would like to move in and finish up Ukraine. He would like to really like to move into Eastern Europe, all of it. He would also like to move into Finland and Sweden. One of my, well, probably my best friend, this politician I worked for years ago, I was the press secretary. When he was running for Congress, we didn't win. We should have, but hey, we didn't have the money that the opponent had. By the way, I was offered a job to run the opponents, other than the other opponents, the opponents' campaign, and I had, and I said, "Well, I've already committed to this guy," and I was working for a congressman in Washington then, and uh, the only lobbyist to have any sway in Washington during the Carter administration, and this uh, this was way back in the Carter administration, uh, was a guy from Texas. Well, the guy running against my guy uh, had worked for my congressman as his administrative assistant, number one assistant, and he was a rich banker back home. He sent the top lobbyist the only one that could talk to Democratic lobbyists to talk to Carter because he didn't like to talk to the lobbyists. But he talked to this guy because he was so powerful. They sent him over to see me. Well, I didn't have my own private office, but the administrative assistant at the time said, oh, because the guy said, Dale, can I borrow your office to talk to John and Ben? Yes, sir. You surely may. Wow, this guy is big time. Uh, came in and said, Now, John Ben, Mr. Pope is behind Marvin, Congressman Pope. Now, Marvin has an operation going already, but he needs somebody to be his right hand and during the campaign and help manage the campaign, do the press, all those sorts of things. And he needs somebody he can trust and knows the business. You do. Now, Marvin would make you run the campaign. Marvin will provide you a car. Marvin will set you up and pay for your apartment. 
you pay you real good in the campaign. When he wins, you're going to go to Washington and be one of the leaders in the office. Now, John Ben, you could go to work for Marvin and have a great career, or you could work for this other fellow. I'll leave his name out, but like I said, he's my best friend because I really did think he was a great guy, and I still think he's a great guy. He later became ambassador to Sweden, head of the uh, He'd been head of the state insurance board and, and he was president of a major corporation in New York for a while. So he's a smart guy and a great guy. Uh, he said, John Ben, I'd hate to see you, that's what obvious said, make the wrong decision and ruin your political career at an early age. I'm going, well, let me have time to think about it. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you coming by. Well, it did ruin my political career in a large measure. Because I, Marvin won and served for a number of years uh, and even thought about you know, pushing to become Secretary of the Army, which if he had, I would have gone with him as well, which would have been really fun. Can I borrow that helicopter for a while? I need to run to 7-Eleven. It's a Huey helicopter, and if anybody gets in the way, we just use the machine gun and scare them off. <laughs> Kidding here. But that's politics. But that's political participation as well. You get involved in politics, you have power. If you just vote, you have power to protect yourself, to advance yourself. This is off topic just a little bit, but I need to bring it up simply for your for your well-being. Political participation. Elections are coming up. Go volunteer in a campaign. You show up on a Saturday night and work on a Saturday night at the campaign headquarters of somebody running for Congress later on, now running for the U.S. Senate or the Texas Senate or the U.S. or the Texas House. Now, late at night on a Saturday night, the candidates probably coming home, coming back to the headquarters after campaigning all day, and you've been stuffing envelopes and working there, uh, you know, it's not a highly paid job, you're just volunteering anyway, but you're working your butt off. And usually on these nights when the candidates come back, uh, his big time supporters, financial supporters will come over and they're pretty interested and always have been involved in politics. Because smart people do this, wealthy people do this. They know the power and the importance of politics. They ain't going to let somebody other than them make the decision. Unless that other decision gets out there and knows what he's doing because he's been in politics or she's been in politics since going to HCC or while going to HCC. You're out there on a Saturday night. These, this guy comes in and he owns a huge corporation. And he walks by and says, sits down with the candidate and says, by the way, who's that kid working at, working there at the typewriter and folding envelopes? Oh, he's been there. She's been, rather, she's been here all, all day long. She works so hard. I'm impressed as all hell. I mean, smart, real smart, has good ideas. She tosses good ideas out. I mean, she doesn't even pushy, but she just comes up with things and talking, and then you go, that's, that's not a bad idea. She's smart. What impresses me, Mr. Candidate, as a businessman, any youngster that's got the gumption, got the guts and the grit to be here on a Saturday night has got one hell of a work ethic. This is the person I want in my company, and I certainly would want on my staff if I were running a political office. Good point. So when he walks out, he's going to stop by and say, young lady, 
oh, I'm so and so. Here's my card. I run the so and so corporation. And I, I've got pretty good sway in this town, but I'm always looking for good people. And even if I don't have anything that you'd be interested in my place, I know people that are looking for smart young people to go to work and make a big splash and a big career for themselves. And I think you've got that. I got you've got that kind of talent. You call this name. He's a friend of mine because I know he's looking for somebody. And I'll call him and I'll tell him what I think of you. He's going to hire you. You got yourself a good career if you wanted to stay with it. And it's something you're interested in, but it damn sure will look good on your resume. Well, thank you. Are you going to get that by just sitting at home or going out and drinking or partying all night long and going roaring up and down the streets? No. But if you're not, of course, if you're not a serious person and want to develop and have a good future, fine, that's okay. But then you're probably not a really good student either. To which I say, wake up. Wake up. It's time to get serious about life. That's what it's about. You got to study. You got to work. Nobody's going to give it to you. But if you work, and you work well and smart, and you learn, and you're always willing to learn, you're always reading, you're always thinking, you're always asking questions, you're going to move ahead, and you're going to be picking out the color chart on your Ducati, or Maserati, or whatever. But anyway. Political participation can be of benefit to you as well as to the community. And I toss out the personal helping you so that you can see, hmm, it's not just doing the right thing, it's doing a dead gun smart thing, isn't it? Whoa, okay. All right, let's go on. I'm going to go on for another 15 minutes and and move forward. We've got more time. And we'll, I want you to be reading the notes. I want you to read your book. By the way, quick aside, also on this. Uh, some people have been a little disturbed about the online textbook, and it's just a little bit hard to negotiate. It's also, well, where are the chapters? It says modules, and it doesn't make any sense. Think of, when they're talking about modules, think of it being a chapter. And when they have their subdivision, it's just subheadings in the uh, in, in, in a book that you find in a lot of instances in textbooks, for instance. Uh, they're called modules in your online Texas government textbook. Think of it as a chapter, because that's essentially what it is. And then they have what they're called lessons. In other words, the lesson is a reading assignment. You get smart by reading a lot. You do. And if you haven't developed a reading habit, start. Again, that's only if you want to be successful in a career. Because you're going to have to be able to assimilate a lot of information. Whether it's out of a book, or it's out of a screen, or in a meeting, or you take notes on what's going on. But reading is, is a commercial on TV. Public service announcement. Reading is fundamental. You can't put stuff in this brain without reading. And if you're reading off your cell phone, great. You're still reading. If you're reading, now texting is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about read the New York Times, read the Washington Post, read the Houston Chronicle online. Subscribe to newspapers online. It'll cost you a little money. Or log into the public or the school library or the public library and read the newspapers digitally. It will benefit you to know what's happening around you so that you can take advantage of it. Information is power. Put it in your head. Okay. Uh 
political party primaries. Let's let's do this real quick here. In every general election year, two major party, the two major parties in our two party system, Democratic Party and Republican Party, have their primary elections in the months before the summer. It's in these party elections that are funded by the two political parties and the state government. Each party, the Democratic and the Republican Party, excuse me, itching. the two parties select candidates to run for the offices that are open that year in the November general election. They select their candidates in the Democratic Party and the, they select their candidates in the Republican Party. Whoever wins their party's nomination for a given office, such as the Republican candidate for governor and the Democratic con candidate for governor, automatically appear on the November general election ballot. The general election ballot in November of that general election year. Only candidates from the two Marty major parties will, by the laws established by each of the states, automatically appear on the general election ballot. Whoa, how'd they swing that? Because they're the two major parties. It's much more difficult for minor parties. The, the, the oh, well, so, uh, oh, who was it? Ross Perot had a, his own party, a Freedom Party, or something like that. There have been all sorts of third parties, minor parties that tried to get going. And they had some following, but uh, here's the deal. It's much more difficult for minor party candidates to get on the general election ballot in November because state legislatures write the election laws for each of the individual states. And in every state, the legislature is made up almost entirely by what? Republicans and Democrats. And they don't agree on much of anything with regard to their political issues that they're fighting over. But the thing they do agree on, the thing they do agree on is their wish as the two major parties to keep control of elections and political institutions like the legislatures, the Congress, the presidency, and to make it damned hard for any other party to easily participate in the election process. Well, that's not fair. No, that's called power. It's not fair in your book because you lost, my friend. We knew what we were doing. You didn't. <laughs> and you didn't get involved until it was too late. You sat on your butt. We were out working our butts off. We don't give away toys. We don't give away the power to boys and girls that don't earn it. It's not a toy be given away at Christmas. It's something that you earn from working hard. You ain't done it. We did. We're going to keep it. That's the attitude for the two parties. So, hey, get involved. Get involved. Uh, by the way, in Texas, our two-party primaries are held in March, on the first Tuesday of March. Other states hold their party primaries at other times throughout the first part of the general election year. The first state in the country traditionally to hold a party primary is in New Hampshire. In February. Uh, anyway. Oh gosh, it's uh, well. Let's just go a few more minutes here. It's only nine after. In whatever month a state holds its two-party primaries, both the Democratic and Republican parties hold their primary elections on the same day. It's during the primary that people who want to be their party's nominee for the offices that are up for election on the November general election ballot compete to win their party's nomination for those contested offices. Whoever wins the party's primary election for a particular office will automatically be placed on the November general election ballot. 
on that November general election ballot as the party's nominee. For example, a few years back in March, the Republican Party primary, Attorney General Greg Abbott won the Republican nomination for governor. Uh, and his name appeared on the general election ballot in November. A state senator won the Democratic primary election. Uh, her name was Wendy Davis. And she appeared on the general election ballot as a Democratic candidate for governor. Usually there are several candidates running against each other in the party's primary to win their party's nomination for a particular office. In the, priorities, in the primary election, a candidate must win the election by a majority, at least a 50% plus one of the total vote. If no candidate wins the primary race for a particular office by a majority, a runoff, a runoff election will be held 30 days after after the primary between the person who got the most votes and the person who got the second most votes. In that two-person runoff election, one of the two candidates almost certainly will win a majority of the vote and that person wins the nomination and shows up on the general election ballot as the party nominee for that position. In the very rare, rare case that there's a 50-50 tie, the race will often be decided by a coin flip. Let's leave it at that. Let's leave it at that. It's 511. It's a, I think that's about a good time to call it quits. You need to go read. You got a lot of reading to do in those chapters that are called modules in your textbook. My notes that I provided and work up review sheets. And by the way, when you're reading in your textbook, take notes. I miss a paper te textbook. I may even go back to a paper textbook in the future simply because myself, of course, I'm old school in that regard, although I, you know, I live on computers now. But I like to read in a book and underline and make notes in the margins, called marginalia. Anyway, that's a hospital calling. I go to them a lot. So I'm going to see what they need me to do. I'll talk to you later. You have a great day. I appreciate you. Take appreciate care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye. God bless you. Take care of yourself. Take care. Bye-bye. Hello. I am speaking to you. Yes. Yes, ma'am.